This is the 1980 album cover to Deface the Music by Utopia. Now, for those few who have not noticed yet, this is similar to the album cover with the Beatles. This is not a coincidence, this is a direct homage, just like the songs in the album. But first, we need to explain how this happened. For those of you who don't know, in 1981, the band Utopia already had four albums under their belt. Todd Rugen, the lead singer of the band, was commissioned to write a song for a movie. When writing the song, he went for a classic Beatles approach, but the song got rejected for being too similar in the studio fearing legal action. So the band thought, well, we have this one Beatles-like song we enjoyed making, might as well do a full concept tribute album. And here we are. I'm going to review this album as its own thing, as I have yet to listen to the other albums by this band, as I'm not a Utopia fan at all. But I have listened to a few of their other songs, and from what I've heard is some good original sounding music with some electric pianos thrown in. Anyways, I have listened to every Beatles album, so I can judge it as a pay respects to those, I guess? I, I, I don't know, let's just begin. The first five songs on this album are in the style of the pop songs in the early career of the Beatles, whether they be about girls or loneliness. The first track, the one that got rejected for the movie, remember? Starting with a harmonica and having a harmonica solo about a minute in, similar to Love Me Do. This whole first song is really catchy. While it shows its age a little bit, it's still a fun song today that will be stuck in your head after a few listens. They even do the ooze during the bridges. There's also this Ed Sullivan show like music video that is pretty cool. They went out of the way to do that. After that, we get tracks like Alone and Where Does the World Go to Hide that share this different feeling of music than the songs around it. But then we get to Take It Home, which if you somehow pick this record up, played it, and haven't made the Fab Four connections yet, then this will clearly show it. As this song sounds similar to the way from Day Tripper. After that, just like the music of the Beatles, this album changed its style. We get a song called Hoi Polo. I hate to interrupt, but I like to say that it's called Hoi Polo, not Hoi Polo. I have no idea why I mispronounced it like that. Though, which is admittedly another love song. Kind of. This one sounds more like a Sgt. Pepper love song than a Please Please Me love song. Is. Its chorus is about a guy inviting a girl to a quote unquote curiosity shop and saying, hey, don't bring any money, we'll make our own fun. It's an okay song. But then we have Life Goes On. Life Goes On is very clearly inspired by Eleanor Wigby, the instrumental, the third person way of looking at things, and the voices and the chorus are sung the exact same way. But one thing you'll notice immediately is that instead of using violins, it uh, uses an electric piano. I could see how some would say that this makes the song feel a bit dated, but I personally like the feeling it gives to the song. Eleanor Wigby was already a strange song when you examine the lyrics, but Utopia's lyrics somehow make the song even more ominous. It's a track on here you certainly won't forget. The next track is another Sgt. Pepper sounding song. Feel Too Good is an okay song that is a really satisfying chorus and uses a fixing a hole sounding riff. Don't have much to say about it. Always Late is next, and this one I kinda like, because it has a really cheerful catchy piano and drums. There's silly lyrics, and it feels more like its own thing than any Beatles song I can think of. But its use of sound effects does remind me of Yellow Submarine. A really good track on this album. After that we have All Smiles. This track is slower than the song before it, but it's another love song. The instrumental makes this song more memorable. If you like Michelle from Where We're Soul, then you'll like this song. And for the last song, we have one of the greatest tracks on the whole album. Everybody else is wrong. Now, this is a mix between Strawberry Fields Forever and I Am The Walrus uh, in the instrumental and lyrical parts. These two songs are blended together perfectly to make this final track. I like these opening lines, The Edge of the World, Heading Home, The Album's Emma Sober. It made more sense in my mind. The chorus here sounds really good with the song's fast-paced drums. The song ending with the single repeating Everybody Else Is Wrong over and over again is a creative choice to end the album on. 
And that was Deface the Music. A lot of the reviews I've seen call this their Beatles parody album, but me personally, I think of it more as a tribute than a parody. But if you do want a good parody, then look no further than the Waddles. Their first album was made in 20 minutes. The second took even longer. Also, this wasn't the last Beatles-related project Todd Reagan would work on, as he would later be a member of Ringo Starr's all-star band, band for a few years in the 90s and most of the 2010s. While we're at it, this probably won't be my last video about music. There are some other albums that I think would make great videos, but don't expect these to be the next video or anything. I have already have a script I've been working on for half of a year, and now I'm almost finished with it, so bye. I might have to listen to one of Utopia's other albums as this kind of made me interested in what else they did.